Hello and welcome to our video on the Mesozoic Era, the Age of Reptiles. During this video we'll go over the Triassic, Jurassic, and Cretaceous period and then we'll talk about the mass extinction at the end of the Mesozoic Era. So if we look at the Mesozoic Era, what we're looking at is a period of time from about 250 million years ago to about 65 million years ago. In this time we have three different periods. We have the Triassic, the Jurassic, and the Cretaceous period. And some of the highlights you can see on here, um, we're noticing that seed plants, including the conifers or your pine trees, are becoming more common. We're seeing early mammals are evolving. We're seeing modern types of fishes are evolving. We're noticing that Pangaea splits apart at the end of the Triassic, beginning of the Jurassic period. So now we're seeing a more modern looking landscape where we're seeing the continents like they are today. Not exactly, but getting into that type of area. We noticed that we had many dinosaurs evolve and then they continued to flourish up until the end of the Mesozoic era. A big one is flowering plants. The angiosperms evolved here and then finally we'll talk about this mass extinction event that happened 65 million years ago with a meteorite impact. Okay, so what we're talking about when we're talking about at the beginning of the Mesozoic era, this Triassic period, you notice that we have a term here, Panthalas, and that means all sea. What that meant is if you looked at Earth from space during the Triassic period, we would have had the one supercontinent of Pangaea, and then the rest of the planet was this one big ocean. And we noticed that even though it was in a temperate type climate, it was kind of tropical here and there, or this supercontinent, it was mild. Um, at the end of the Triassic is when we had the breakup of that supercontinent and that's what kind of allowed for a lot of the evolution to flourish in the Jurassic period. In the Triassic period we had some, remember we just had a mass extinction so we're having all of these different animals that are now exploring and exploiting these new niches and that's when we start to see the first dinosaurs. We also saw the first mammals which were going to be small rodent like looking creatures and then we also started to see these gymnosperms, these seeded plants. And those would be like your pine trees and things of that nature. Okay, so now let's talk about the Jurassic period. Geologically, the Jurassic period was pretty phenomenal in the fact that Pangaea started to split. And when it did so, we had all of these like shallow, warm seas that were like protected in between the continents as they were starting to separate and migrate apart. And what this did is this gave us a new type of environment to exploit instead of having that one big sea, that Panthalaza that we saw. Now we're starting to see different seas, different oceans starting to form. And that allowed for new things to evolve and we have our more modernized fishes. So now what we're seeing is the fish evolution coming through. And not that we had modern species, but we have modern types of fish. We also saw some reptiles return to the water. So our plesiosaurs and our ichthyosaurs, these are reptiles that ancestors evolved on land and they went back into the water. They had lungs, but they adapted back to aquatic life. So these big aquatic dinosaurs now returning to the water. Um, speaking of dinosaurs, we had all kinds of dinosaurs happening here. We had the meat eaters like the Allosaurus that was running around in the Jurassic period. We had our plant eaters like our Brachiosaurus. We also had some flying ones, some pterosaurs. And the pterosaurs through skin flaps were able to glide and possibly fly. Um, it's tough by fossil evidence. It's kind of people are on the fences whether they could fly on their own or not. But then we also saw this guy here, this Archaeopteryx. And Archaeopteryx was the future of birds. So birds evolved from the dinosaurs and Archaeopteryx was one of those cross species. It was one of those that had the reptilian traits and the bird-like traits. Some of the dinosaurs in the Jurassic had feathers and feathers now are the trait of birds. So we can see where this evolution is going. And here we just have a sample of what it probably looked like during the Jurassic time. Notice we have our large dinosaurs, we have our plant eaters, we have our big meat eaters hanging out, we have our pterosaurs here. Notice the conifers, so we have our seed plants that are now thriving. And then this guy right down here in the corner would be like what Archaeopteryx would have looked like. So kind of a cross between a bird and a reptile. Now we get to the Cretaceous period. So Pangaea continued to split and we had these inland seas going on. Um, geologically some of the other neat things, Madagascar split from Africa. 
And if you look at Madagascar evolution-wise, um, biologic-wise, it's different from Africa in a lot of ways. So this split was kind of interesting and neat. Um, we're going to see that swamps from the Cretaceous form some of our coal beds, especially those found in Canada and the western United States. We had our dinosaurs still here. And one of the things that's kind of ironic is our big villain from Jurassic Park was actually a Cretaceous dinosaur, our T-Rex. Um, we saw the evolution of snakes. So we're starting to see snakes in the fossil record here. We have some more modern mammal groups that are evolving at this point in time. Not that we had the modern mammals. Remember, these are just groups. So these are just types of mammals that will evolve into our modern day species. And the big one is we had the advent of flowering plants. So if we look over here, we can see some modern day looking insects, the modern day plants going on. You can see some mammals down here. We have our suite of dinosaurs up here is going on as well. And the Cretaceous period ended with this huge mass extinction. So 65 million years ago is when we had this one. And that also marked the end of the Mesozoic era. Okay, so now let's talk about the end of the Mesozoic era and this mass extinction that happened 65 million years ago. Now, we know that there was a mass extinction because that was the end of the dinosaurs. So we lost an entire suite of animals this way. Um, there's other animals went extinct. I don't want you to think that it was just individually going out after the dinosaurs. But remember, with these mass extinctions, we're seeing a rapid change in the climate, rapid change in the environment and it kills off most of the species. And the benefit of this is now it opens up niches for the animals that survive and we see this massive influx of new animals or new types of animals coming through. Now, what caused the Mesozoic mass extinction? That's kind of up for debate with some. Um, it used to be a little bit more, but we've gotten a lot better with our increased data through satellites and things. And what we believe was is that we had this one large meteor that came down and struck the Earth. And the picture here is probably a really good representation of what it would have looked like. It would have crashed into the Gulf of Mexico near the Yucatan Peninsula and hit with such force that as it came through, it would have pushed the water away. So it would have hit land when it impacted. And this impact would have jolted the earth, thrown up a lot of dust, which would have probably stuck in the atmosphere for a while. And the problem with this is if you take our atmosphere and you put that dust in there, then suddenly the plants aren't able to photosynthesize. The plants start to die. When the plants die, the plant eaters start to die. And then the meat eaters start to die because of lack of food. So you can see how this is just a chain of events that goes through. We believe it was this meteorite that attacked because if we look around the earth at 65 million years ago in our rock layer, so we have our rocks here, and we'd have a layer there, and then we'd have another layer here. If we look at the 65 million year ago age, we find this thin layer that has iridium in it, and that generally comes from meteorites. It comes from space. So there's a layer of that all around the world. Everywhere where we find 65 million years old, that's what we're finding, that layer. And that led us to believe that it was an asteroid strike. So the big issue was for years is, okay, well, if this big asteroid hit, where did it hit? And with satellite technology, what we've been able to do is we can actually have found the impact crater. And it's down in the Gulf of Mexico near the Yucatan Peninsula. Okay, so that's it for my video. As always, you'll learn more in the lesson, and good luck on the quiz, and we'll see you in the next video.